So to crack the password, we're going to use hashcat, okay? But we're not going to do a brute force attack, right? Because this password probably has, you know, lowercase, uppercase, number, symbol, and all that. So I don't want to waste too much time. You know, probably my machine cannot handle all that, all the brute force. So what we're going to do is to use a word list. Right, so basically a word list, we're going to generate, you know, uh, passwords that we think is the answer. We're going to generate a huge word list. We're going to pass that to, to Hashcat. And then what Hashcat is going to do is it's going to take, it's going to take each one of the, the words or the passwords in, in a file. It's going to hash that and then compare to what we provided, which is the password that will be obtained from the database. If they match, then that means Hashcat was able to find the password because for each one, for each password, there's only going to be a single hash. Yeah. And the reason why some, some of the hashes, they, they kind of deprecate is because there could be a collision, which means that two different passwords, they will generate the same hash. But here we're using SHA-256. We're probably not going to have that problem. Okay. And so to generate the word list, now we're going to generate the word list. Generate the word list, we're going to use a tool called Crunch. So I don't know if you heard of, of, of this tool called Crunch. So with Crunch, we're, we're able to generate, you know, tons of kind of word lists. Yeah. The ones that we're going to be generating, they, we, we actually know some information. The challenge is, is telling us. We know that it is a password that has 12 characters in total, and we do have six of them. So we have this, the, uh, the six or the, the first three and the last three. So the first six, the first three is 406 and the last three characters is C74. But we don't know what what's in the middle of it, and that's exactly what we're going to be using Crunch to generate different different kinds of password. So let me just clear my uh, actually. I, I'm going to need this later, so I'm just going to put that into a file. It's a password. Let's go here. Yep, and this is the salt. Salt, make sure it's there. Perfect. Now I can clear. Okay, let me do a let's see the manual of crunch. So you can see the, the options. So with crunch, what we're gonna be doing is we have the, the command, and then after that we have the minimal and the maximum length, which means that if I want to, let's say you're on the website and the website says that the passwords they need to have the minimum of eight characters and the maximum of 13 characters. So this is what you need to, you, you can specify here. So you're gonna generate passwords where the minimal length is gonna be eight and the maximum length is gonna be 13. Yeah, so this is the first two information that we're gonna provide. Then after that, there is the, the char set string. And this is the, the, the characters that um, the crunch is gonna use. Oh, sorry, let me bring it up again. So these are the characters that Crunch is going to be using. And, you know, here you can specify different things. You can say that you only want lowercase, lowercase, or you only want uppercase, etc. But in our case, there is a, an option called dash T. Let me look for it right here. And this is the pattern. Yeah. The pattern says if you specify at, that means it's going to insert um, lowercase characters. Or if you specify comma, it's going to insert uppercase characters, percentage, insert numbers, etc. In my case, uh, or at least for this dojo specifically, it says that the six characters in between should be lowercase. Yeah, so here I'm just, you know, making everyone's life easier because I don't want, you know, people ex waiting for hours and days to for the password to be cracked. So we know that it's lowercase letters and we're going to have to specify at. Okay, so we're gonna have to specify six at like this. You've got at at g o d at at at. So that means that these these are gonna be lowercase, and then every single password is gonna have g o d, and then some random random letters. All right, let's do it. I have crunch, and another thing that the 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 the, the challenge says is that's twelve characters. So we know it's twelve characters. We don't need a, a minimum and a maximum different. We know it's gonna be twelve. So I'm going to specify 12 as the minimum and 12 as the maximum. Now, the, the next thing is the, that's the pattern. So the pattern is going to be 406. That's the, I know that that's the first three. Then this, the next six characters, I know it's lowercase. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the last four or the last three is six or C74. 
And if I just run like this, it's just gonna, you know, output everything. And I don't want that. I wanna put everything into a file because I'm gonna have to specify that to, to Hashcat later. So I'm just gonna do dash O for output. And I'm gonna type in wordlist.txt. Let me run this. And the cool thing about Crunch is that it's actually gonna tell you what's what's gonna be the size of your wordless file. So as you can see here, my file is gonna have over three gigabyte in size. And you know, the more the more the, 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 the more complex the pattern is, the larger the file is gonna be. And of course, that this is you know, you'd have to know a lot of information for you to be able to um, to crack this uh, because you know this is a, a this is a, a long password, twelve characters. And it, it's got numbers, it's got lowercase, but in real life, you know, you've got passwords which are much larger than 12 characters. You're gonna insert symbols, you're gonna insert um, uppercase numbers, etc. So this means that if you try to word list, you know, this word list would be gigantic. And so what, you know, hackers tend to do in this case is that they use something which is called a, a, a rainbow table. And with a rainbow table, the difference between a word list and a rainbow table is that with the table you already have pre-computed hash so here you're gonna see that our passwords they're, they're you know they're just plain text passwords and hash hashcat is still gonna have to find out the hash for them but with the rain, rainbow table the hashes are pre-computed so it's you know it's much faster and usually you know they have rainbow tables on the internet you know which you know with the most common passwords the sort of things or even mo the most complex passwords so that's usually how they do in, in real life but if if it's a password that you know more or less, you know the, the 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 pattern of the password, then you can use something like like Crunch. Okay, so everything has been generated. If I do ls, I can see wordlist.txt, and if I want if I want to know the size, I do du dash x or dash sh, and that's gonna tell me that it's 3.8 gigabyte. Yeah, so which is pretty much what it told me here. Perfect. So now I have my my word list. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to put the information about the password and the salt that I obtained from, from the database in, into a file. And that file, I'm going to pass it on to, to Hashcat later. The syntax for us to do that, I need to do echo-n. And then I need, to, I need to specify the password in the hash, colon, and then the, the salt. So let me just cat the, the files. So cat password and cat salt and I'm gonna do echo copy the first one so this is the this is the password now ec2 here I c colon and then the salt which is which is this so just make sure I've got it correctly so b60 B five C. All right, and then at the end, I just redirect that to a file which I'm gonna call hash.txt. If I if I cat that, that's what we have. So that's what we're gonna be specifying to to hashcat. I think it, it might be better if I do hashcat help because there there is gonna be too much information. But this yeah, this is better. Okay, what I what I need here first is the is the mode. Let me see the mode here. There's a lot of information. Okay, so this is the the hash mode, and the mode is basically the the hash that was used to hash the password. So we know that that's SHA-256. So as we can see here, we can see SHA-256. But on the right hand side, we've got category, and it says raw hash. And the, the thing with the raw hash is like basically taking the password, hashing it, and, and that's it. But we know that that's not what happened because there was a salt. So if I scroll down, there is shot 256 over here. And we've got four different types. This is for uh, UTF-16. And I'm not, I'm not too interested in UTF-16 because I'm just using very, you know, simple, uh, simple characters. So all, all I need is either 1410, so that's the mode, or 1420. The difference between 1410 and 1420 is that 1410 is if you think that the password was hashed, 
in a way that you had the password first and then you put the, the salt and then you hashed. If you, if you specify 1420, that means you had the, the, the salt first and then the password and then you hashed. Yeah. Of course that, you know, in real life, you would know exactly which one you just try them, both of them. Uh, in my case, I know that I'm going to be using the four, 1410. So in my case, when I generated that password, I generated with the password following by, by the salt. So I'm going to use 1410 as, as my mode. Now, another thing that I, that I need, so let me scroll down here to show you. That's a lot of things. Wait, is the right there. Yeah. The attack mode. Yeah. So the attack mode, uh, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to specify zero because this is a straight attack and straight attack means that, you know, Hashcat is just going to read everything from, from the word list. And then it's going to, to just use those passwords as they are. Yeah. So with the brute, like for example, with the brute force is it was, you, you pass a, like a key set, right. And then it's just going to try to generate as many passwords as you can, and then try to break it. Combination is gonna, is gonna take letters and combine this letter in different ways. But I know that my password is in my word list. So that's why I'm gonna specify straight. So just read from whatever I specify and that's it. You could specify a lot of things, like for example, the, the chart set here, uh, like for brute force, if you want to, if you want to use these characters, etc. But in my case, yeah, you, you can even specify if you wanna use CPU or GPU, right? In my case, I'm, I'm going to be very simple. This challenge is very simple. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do hash cat and then the attack mode, like I said, is a straight attack. So number zero, then the type of uh, the mode is going to it's going to be 1410, which means that it's a password following by by the salt. After that, we need the hash file. So the hash file is the one that we created, which is hash.txt. And then following that one, you specify the word list. So word list.txt. And here I'm gonna have to specify force because a few a few issues that I was running into. And now basically hashcat is gonna start. And the way this works is, is it's gonna it's gonna go through you know all the passwords, trying to crack the passwords. And then during this this um, during this process, you can actually get the status. And it's gonna yeah, I'm, I'm gonna show you because it's gonna be easier. But there is a lot of information while it's trying to um, to crack the password. So let me just wait for it to, to start. Now it's just you know caching the the word list because it's a you know it's a three gigabyte file. So let's wait for this in a second. Okay, so now it's running, and it says here uh, the file name, the the amount of password, the key space, etc. And we can specify S, P, B, or C or Q. So I'm gonna specify S for the status. And what we can see is that, you know, there's a, a session for Hashcat. It's still running. It's using SHA-256 as password and salt. This is the uh, the hash target. So this is the password. Oh, that was too quick. Let, let me just go back here and explain. This is the, the password that we specified together with the with the salt. And this is even the, you can see the candidates here. So number, number one was 406. And these are the, the characters that were generated. So it's going from here to here and trying to crack. And this was a little bit quicker because it was only three gigabyte and I intentionally did it in a way that this will be quick, but this is what we get when, once we find the password, this is the hash that we provided, uh, this is the salt, and then this is the password, which were cracked, which was cracked. Yeah. So if you take this, uh, this password, you put together with the salt, you run through a SHA-256, it's going to give this. So this is the password and Hashcat was able to, to find it. And right here down the bottom, you can see the status it says cracked, which means it, it, find, it found the password. Okay, let's go back here. So first thing we did was to crack the password. And then the master character is gonna be the sixth character of the cracked password. So let me copy this. Echo. But one, two, six. Oops, one, two, so that's going to be the letter E. So letter E is our master character for, uh, for task number three.